YouTube. Welcome back to the Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And today we are going to review the combination. Hold on. I got to put the uh, mic in. Well, actually, this is what it sounds like without the mic. Alright, I'm glad it actually was unhooked. So, uh, I forgot to plug the, uh, this part in to the, uh, camera. Uh, had to change the battery. So, anyway, um, so we'll just do a test right now. So, I'm going to walk away from the camera and show you what it's like when I'm talking. So, you guys get an idea. Now, I'm going to walk outside and we'll let you hear what that sounds like with the camera mic. Alright, so now I'm walking down here. I'm walking outside. I'm by the uh, bench. And now I'm coming back in, walking around, and into your view. Alright, so that's without the camera, or the uh, microphone lavalier mic system. So now we're going to hook that up. Alright, should have sound from this now. So, that makes a big difference if it's working. I do show that I've got signal from this and I do have the power light on, on the unit. Now, this has got a base that I put in my cell phone holder. Uh, I've got a cell phone holder attachment for my rig so that I can just put a cell phone in it in a pinch if I have to film with my cell phone. So uh, I'm using that to hold the base that has the antenna on it. It's powered by a two AAA batteries. Now the battery component housing is trashy. Uh, when I, I noticed I did a video to show you guys how this was working. I had good sound, but it didn't work out very well because I was in the house. So I tested it, watched it. I had good sound, sounded great, sounded like I was in the same spot every single time. Then I deleted it and did a second video, which was going to be the one I put up. Well, this one ends up being the one that I was going to put up because the first one had no sound. And the reason that it was like that is because I was holding it in the cell phone holder where the battery door hooks up. And every time I put it there, the power light would go out. So I had to move the thing over to where the, the battery door was completely off of the mount itself with no pressure on it. So apparently you put a little pressure on it to squeeze it and it disconnects your battery. So I did the whole video with no sound. So now we're going to do this test again. What we're using is the GoPro Hero 2 with a lavalier mic system which is a JH33 08 uh, receiver and then I've got a transmitter right there which is the same number you can pause that anytime and then you've got the little mic that comes up and clips to your shirt and it's got a switch on it for on, off, and the unit, the uh, receiver, has the same thing. So, now we're going to do that same test. Now I'm going to walk back here and see if it changes anything, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing I did before. And this time I'm going to kill a bug. 
<laughs> oh, I bet that was loud in y'all's ear. Anyway, now we're going to walk outside here. <laughs> and we're going to go outside. And we're going to see how far this thing will reach. I'm going to tell you where I am, how far I am, or whatever. I'll use my own judgment on the distance when I'm watching the edit part. So now I'm going down the steps and I'm walking out by the rain barrel that you guys see in my video, which is approximately 10 feet, 12 feet away from the door. Now we are at the top of the shop. And now we're going to head over to my truck and we'll see how far we get before the antenna's not strong enough to get it. I've probably already fell out of focus, but anyway, an idea. I don't think I'm ever going to be that far away from the uh, camera to begin with. So it doesn't matter. Now I'm back in the shop. Voila, I'm here. So we did a lot of cleaning up in the shop. And I wanted to kind of walk around and show you guys uh, my clean tools. <laughs> uh, for starters, we've got the lathe. Well, let's start over here at the end. We got our toolbox. And this is going to turn into a... shop video so we got our toolbox with all my tools and no I'm not going to open my toolboxes and show everybody what I have I ain't none of their business except for what I want them to know anyway we got our belt sander which needs a better motor because that motor that little third horsepower motor is trash it ain't no good you barely push on that thing and it stops. Then we got the grinding station with the big old monster vise. Alright, then we've got the Dremel attachments. And I just dropped the battery to my camera on the floor somewhere and it disappeared. Alright, then we've got the Grizzly GO602 lathe DRO tailstock Then we got our letter punches And we've got our dial indicator And then we got all of our tools lined up back here. And then we got this. We're going to hook up one day. I don't know when, but uh, I'm still debating on where I want to put it. And I'm thinking right there would be a good place for it. Uh, so that will reach... Actually, it'll reach everywhere because it's on a magnet. I've got this on a magnet that come out of a hard drive. And this really didn't work out too well for the simple reason. It fits th that one tool. <laughs> that one tool. My other check key won't fit it. So I need to either bend this out to make it where it'll take a bigger one which is probably what I'll end up doing and then I have a place for both my chuck keys uh, I wanted to do both chuck keys and the Allen key but I don't think I'm going to have enough room for that
Yeah, I'm not going to have enough room for that. But anyway, you guys get the point. We need to put one there and one there. We don't really want them on top of each other. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. All right, then we got our welder, which needs to be cleaned up down there. Our DC welder, MIG welder. We got our welding rods that we need to replace. We need to get us some more of those um, 330 seconds, I think, uh, E6011s. I really like those. And we got our Harbor Freight welder. That's just a storage place, most because anytime I'm using that when it's outside. All right, then we've got our drill press on this wall. The ram drill press. This year we'll swing over out of, out of the way. And right now I've got it set up with the tabletop with the sacrifice, sacrificial board. And the head. New motor. Alright, then we've got our, oh, well, just uh, whatever, uh, this is where I keep my Trump coffee nice and warm, and if I ever need to use my burner, I mean my uh, crafted by Bob Mullins burner, I just lay it on there and let it get hot, turn that thing full blast, <laughs> and then I, burn, I use it to burn in the wood. All right, then we got our power station, our charging station, all the clamps on the walls, and yes, there's a lot of weight on them walls. That's not a good thing. All right, then we've got the grizzly mill with our upgrades. Nice and clean. And then we just got our odds and ends, drill, drills and drawers and even clutter. <laughs> then we've got our press. All right, and then we've got our metal bandsaw with a pile of metal <laughs> that needs to be going through and some of it put somewhere and some of it not put somewhere. Then we've got our table saw and our pile of steel that's got to go out of here. We're waiting until I'm done with the uh, trailer before I get all this out of here because I don't want to have to keep walking back and forth for it. So Then we've got our bench. And under here we got a router right there with a homemade lift that I made that winds that up and down. And then we've got our wood cutting bandsaw, which I don't do a whole lot of bandsaw on wood. And then we've got our cleaning station. And then we've got, oh, we forgot the exit. We got the exit. <laughs> we also have very charged uh, fire extinguishers. I also have one right there. Whoops, banging into everything. All right, now I got stuff on the wall back there. That's one thing I'll never use. Frickin' handsaw. Hey, if I gotta use a hand hacksaw, right there's my way of cutting. I'd rather use that or a grinder. Them old hand hacksaws are dangerous. 
when they get through you you might have a knuckle left from hitting on your vise then we got our grinder with the wire wheel and it needs to be cleaned in fact let's do that right now take this old greasy nasty rag Clean that up. That's as good as it's going to get cleaned. Alright, then where you've got the buffer. Now I tried this buffer wheel, but it is so out of balance and off center that it's impossible to use. It's so out of balance that it will, it will ruin that bearing. So, I don't know how I'm going to fix that. I don't know if there's a way that you can spin it, spin it while you're taking a grinder sander to it. I don't know if that would work. So, I, I don't know how to um, center that. So, anyway... We're back to the toolbox, so there you have a little tour of the Bison Workshop, which is located in a 30-foot Prowler RV camper. So it is no longer a camper. This is a machine shop that just happens to be remo or movable. Uh, mobile bison workshop. <laughs> uh, this would probably be the ideal thing for somebody who wanted to travel and work as you go. You know, somebody call you up like, and say, hey, I need this job done. Uh, I'll pay you X amount of money to do it. You pack it all up, you move it on down the road. But I don't know if that'd be worth it or not because you got a lot of preparations to, you know, moving a trailer like this. And it being a machine shop, it's, it's kind of um, important to keep it level and uh, not moving around a lot because things change. You'll never get it back the same way you did the first time you leveled it. Uh, once you move it, then things change because things settle here, things settle there. And you know, for a machine shop, you want things to be right anyway <laughs> this wasn't this was just a review video so anyway uh, we're gonna call this a wrap and see how this video works I probably did all this talking for nothing because I probably ain't got no sound everything seems to say I have sound green lights everywhere power red power light so Anyway, you guys don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and tell me what you think of my shop, man. Uh, just thought I'd do that little short walk through, show you what the Bison Workshop's all about. And I really haven't found a whole lot that this shop won't do. Uh, even though I don't have the tools that most people do have, 
I was taught one way to do something and people tend to stick to that way. So, no, I don't have a torch, but I make up for that by figuring out other ways of cutting metal and that's where the bandsaw comes into play. Uh, that's where the grinder comes into play and you don't have the dangers of the fires. Uh, yes, you got a little danger with the grinder, but if you pay attention to where you're putting your sparks, you shouldn't have any problems. But one thing you don't do is put gasoline on your floor, around your grinder, anywhere in your shop. Uh, if you've got grinders going, that's not a good idea. <laughs> uh, you know, if you've got oil in a can that you want that you use to uh, put on your work and your lathe, you don't want to be grinding near stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's all in managing what you have and making it work, and just be done with it. So anyway, you guys have a good one. Later. So now we're going to do this test again. What we're using is the SJ2, I mean the, uh, shit, SJ, the GoPro Hero 2 